Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the second last lecture of the unit and therefore actually of the course. Um, so glad you're able to uh, get along to this point. Uh, we are going to solve systems of linear equations in a third way. Uh, some people will find this the easiest way, some people will find this the hardest way. Um, it really varies and it really depends on how the equations are set up. Uh, to start. So this is called elimination uh, and we can either do elimination by subtraction which I'll show you mostly to start and at the end we'll talk about elimination by addition. Um, the goal is to get two equations that have the same variable and the same number of that variable. So this first equation is set up like that. We have 2x plus y equals 7 and we also have x plus y equals 4. Now our y variable has the same number of y's in the top and the bottom. So that's what we're trying to do. Not every equation will be set up like this to start. You might need to manipulate it in some way to make it look like this, but this is good. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine like this is a subtraction question where we subtract everything that's lined up on top of one another. So 7 minus 4 is 3. y minus y is 0. So we bring the equal sign down as well. I can write my 0 or you don't have to, whatever. And then 2x minus x is just x. So what we're left with is x is equal to 3. And that is half of what we're trying to do in this problem. We're trying to find out what x and y equal. Find out what point these two lines intersect. So we have done half of the problem already. We can now take that um, x equals 3 and plug it into either one of these equations to find out what y would be. I'm going to plug it into the easier one, this bottom one here. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll have 3 plus y is equal to 4, subtract 3 from both sides, y is equal to 1. I now have uh, the two, chord, two parts of the coordinate that I need, 3, 1. That is my solution. You could plug these into each equation and check. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 3 plus 1 is 4. That works out for both of them. So we've done a good job um, at finding out what x and y should be. We can continue on and do this for this example as well. Uh, instead of the y's being set up on top of one another, this time we have the x's being the same. So let's write this out. We have 3x minus 4y is equal to 18. And we have 3x plus 2y is equal to 0. Again, we're going to set this out like a subtraction question because we want to eliminate the variable. That's what we did up here. We eliminated the y. Now we're going to eliminate x so that we can find out what y is. 18 minus 0 is 18. Minus 4y minus 2y, that's minus 6y, and then this equals 0. 3x minus 3x. We're then left with minus 6y equals 18. Divide both sides by minus 6. We get y is equal to minus 3. So we are half done. We can take that uh, y equals minus 3 and plug it into whichever equa equation we choose uh, up above. I'll choose the one that equals 0. Don't know why. Uh, so this goes into here. We're left with 3x plus 2 times a minus 3 is equal to 0. This is minus 6. 2 times minus 3. And when I add it to both sides, it moves over. So that's 3x is equal to 6. Divide both sides by 3x is equal to 2. And now I can write my solution 2 minus 3. That is our final answer. So when we're talking about elimination, we are eliminating one variable from the equations and making a completely new equation to find out what the, the other variable would be. In the first case, we eliminated y. In this case, we eliminated the x's because they are the same. Let's continue to this next problem where we don't have anything that lines up. We do not have uh, x's or y's that stack on top of each other nicely. 
So let's take a look. We have 2x plus, no we do not. Huh. Let's do this properly. I'll start this again, it's okay. Okay, we have 3x minus 4y equals 7, and I have 5x minus 6y is equal to 8. Now, none of these variables line up. You can't subtract or add anything together to make zero for any of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a number that I can multiply both equations by that make them work. So if I multiply this one by five and this one by three, my x's will line up to be 15. And then I have something that I can work with. So five times three is 15 x, five times minus four is minus 20 y, five times seven is 35. Three times five is 15 x, three times six is minus 18 y, that equals three times eight, which is 24. So now I can subtract those two equations. 35 minus 24, that's 11. If I do minus 20 minus a minus 18, so that's minus 20 plus 18, that's minus 2y. And then I have 0x, because 15x minus 15x is 0. I divide both sides by negative 2, so I find y is equal to negative 11 halves. That is half of our answer. We can now take that uh, y and plug it into either one of our equations to find out what the other um, variable is, x. So let's take this and we're gonna plug it into our top equation. This time, so we plug it in right here. We have three x minus four times negative 11 halves equals seven. Three x minus four times 11 is 44, and then divided by two is 22, so that equals seven. I then add 22 to both sides, so three x is equal to 29. Um, just wanna confirm. I should have a positive 22 here. So then I'm going to be subtracting 22 from both sides, which leaves me negative 15 here, divide both sides by three, x is equal to minus five. Don't be afraid to go back if you feel like you made a mistake, because it definitely happens all the time. That means that our answer then, solution minus five for the x value, minus 11 halves for the y value. And we always wanna write it out like that so that we can see it, circle it, put it in the box. That's very important so that we know um, what we did. I also enjoy the arrows. They help me follow your work. I hope they help you follow mine as well. Uh, there's one for you to try now on your own. So go ahead and pause the video and see how you can do. Uh, when you're done, unpause and we will do it together. All right, let's do this thing. We have 2x plus 7y equals 24 and 3x minus 2y equals minus 4. I can now multiply both equations by a number to make something line up. I want to make the x's line up. It looks like the easiest for me. If I multiply the top one by 3 and the bottom one by 2, these will both be 6, and I can subtract to eliminate. So I would have 6x plus 21y equals 3 times 24, that's three days, that's 72 hours. Boom. We have two times three is six x minus, two times minus two is four y equals, two times minus four is minus eight. We're going to subtract those. So 72 subtract a negative eight, that's positive 80. Uh, subtract a negative four, that makes it 25 y, and then this is zero, six minus six is zero. Uh, let's see, we can then divide both sides by 25, and we're left with y is equal to 80 over 25. But I can definitely break that down. What if I divide both of those by five? I would have y is equal to five, 25 divided by five is five, 
80 divided by 5 is 16, I do believe. Yes. So that is our y value. I can now take it and plug it in to our equation right there. So I'll have 3x times, sorry, going too quick. 3x minus 2 times 16 fifths equals negative 4. 3x minus, minus 2 times 16 is 32 fifths equals negative 4. I'm gonna multiply the whole thing by five to get rid of the fraction. So that would be 15x minus 32 minus, equals minus 20. I can then add 32 to both sides. 15x is equal to 12. Divide both sides by 15. I'll move this up here for you. Divide both sides by 15. That means x is equal to four fifths. And now I can write that as a solution. We have four fifths, 16 fifths. That is our solution. If you didn't get that, um, go back and see where you went wrong. Fractions can definitely be tricky, especially when you need to plug them into another equation and go from there. Um, we have two more examples to do. And with these ones, what we're going to do is instead of subtracting, we're going to add to eliminate. Uh, we have 5x plus 2y uh, equals 13, and we have 2x minus 2y is equal to 8. Now, we can, because these are stacked and these are the same, the only difference is their sign. Instead of subtracting, if we add, the same thing is going to be accomplished. Uh, 13 plus 8 is 21. 2 plus a negative 2, that is 0. And then 5 plus 2 is 7x. I can divide both sides by 7. x is equal to 3. So adding or subtracting to eliminate works no problem. I can then take this 3 and plug it into my equation. Which one do I want to do? I'll do the bottom one, it's more simple. That is right here. I would have two times three minus two y equals eight. This is six minus two y equals eight. Subtract six from both sides, negative two y equals two. Divide both sides by negative two, and y would equal negative one. I can then write that as my solution. So I would have three, negative one, and I'll write that in a box or a circle. That is the solution. You can check that in both of those uh, as you wish. Uh, the last example is a little bit complicated because we have fractions. We need to get rid of those fractions before we can do anything at all. Uh, let's see. We have two thirds x minus one half y equals four. And we have, uh, let's see, one half x plus one quarter y equals five halves. So what we wanna do is we wanna multiply this whole thing by something that gets rid of the fractions. That's the first step. The lowest common multiple of three and two is six. So that is what I need to multiply it by. The lowest common multiple of two and four is four. So that is what I need to multiply that one by. I can now get rid of the fractions to hopefully have something that looks completely fresh. Six times two is 12 divided by three is four X. Uh, six times one is six divided by two, that's negative three Y, and six times four is 24. Let's see, I have four times one is four divided by two, that's two X. Four times one is four divided by four, that is plus one Y equals four times five is 20 divided by two is 10. So now I have two equations, but I don't have anything that lines up. Um, let's see, I'm going to multiply this bottom one by three to make the y's line up and then I can do addition uh, for elimination. So I'm gonna write this one over here, four x minus three y is equal to 24. And now I'm gonna write this in this spot. 
So I've had three times two X is six X. Yes, three times Y is plus three Y and three times 10 is 30. So now I have equations that I can actually work with. After all that work, I can add these together. So 24 plus 30 is 54. Three minus three plus three, that's zero y. And then four plus six is 10 x. I can divide both sides by 10. X is equal to 54 tenths. Um, I divide both of those by two. X is equal to 27 fifths. So that is my X value. I can now take that and plug it in to my equation. So I am going to plug it into two. Which one am I going to do? Oh, I am plugging it into this one right here. It is the simplest to find out what Y is. Y is already all by itself. So this is going to be plugged into this equation. I can plug it into any form of the equation that I had previously. Uh, as long as I did the work properly to get to that equation. So this will end up being 2 times 27 fifths plus y equals 10. We have 2 times 27, we know is 54. So that's 54 fifths plus y equals 10. I need to get rid of the 5 on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply everything by 5. So that's 54 plus 5y equals 50. Move the 54 over by subtracting. That's 5y is equal to negative 4. Divide both sides by 5. y is equal to negative 4 fifths. And then I can write my solution because I have an x coordinate and a y coordinate. 27 over 5 and negative 4 over 5. That is my solution. Do not be afraid of the fractions. Embrace the fractions. They are now your life. Um, thanks very much for watching, guys. That's all I have for now. And I will see you next time in the final uh, lecture of the course. Thanks very much.